What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today I'm very excited to be checking out Meteor from Mayday Games. This is for ages 13 plus. For one to five players, it'll take you five, yeah, you heard me, five minutes to play. And in Meteor, you are going to be playing scientists trying to shoot rockets at asteroids before they collide with Earth and destroy humanity as we know it. Tell me that doesn't sound cool. This is a cooperative game where everyone is going to be working frantically as scientists trying to build rockets and get them and retrofit and do all sorts of stuff before the timers run out. <gasps> Let's open it up, see how it works. Alright then, we're going to take a look at Meteor. Now, first and foremost, we're going to start with a handy dandy rule booklet, and there are two of them. Oh, the madness. The first one is about nine pages, double-sided, full color. It's very well done. It will have you up and running in no time at all, and this will teach you how to play the base game, and also how to add in the different variants, because there are going to be a couple different variants that you're going to get in the game. Very well done rule booklet. Now, this one over here is not actually part of the rule booklet. It is a card glossary, because there's going to be a lot of symbology on the cards. You're going to be like, well, WTF, what is that? Well, uh, that's what this is. So it's just going to go over all the different kinds of cards in the game. And the great thing about this game is when you come to those cards in this game, because it is a very, very fast-paced game, you can pause the game and then go look at the card glossary and then get back to the madness. But we'll get into how that works in a second. So what are you going to be doing in this game? Well, in Meteor, you are going to be a team of scientists. You and up to four other players are going to be a team of scientists trying to prevent meteors from coming through the atmosphere and destroying Earth. You're going to be doing this by building rockets and shooting rockets at meteors. Tell me that is not a cool theme. Uh, so this is a lightning quick game. Uh, once you know how to play the game, the game will take you less than five minutes because you are on the clock. You're going to have five minutes, which are represented by these one minute sand timers, to successfully destroy all the meteors before they come down and hit Earth. So that's the basis of the game. Let's go down to the comp let's go over all the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. The first one I'm going to get out of the way right here. Everyone's going to have retrofit card in front of them and a launch site leader card. You probably will never use these because this game is so hectic, but it is nice that they have it in there, and you'll want this one maybe in front of you when you first start the game. But overall, you're probably never really going to use those because the game is so fast-paced, frantic, and it's cooperative, so other people can help you out. Next, you're going to have these atmosphere cards right here. They're going to go from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. When you start off, everything's going to be hunky-dory. They're going to be up in space. And as they get closer to Earth, bad things, well, are going to happen. Uh, if you run out of time, so if the, the final sand timer has ran out and you still have meteors out there, you lose the game. So that kind of stinks. Uh, these, these are going to be denoted by the sand timers. These are all one-minute sand timer. You are going to... Dictate, you're going to pick one person who's going to be the keeper, of the keeper of the time, so they're going to be taking control of this and taking control of that in addition to their normal duties. All three of these cards down here are advanced variants that you can play with, so I'm going to put those over the side, and we'll talk about those at the end. So let's get to the meat and potatoes, which are the meteors. Now, you are going to set up the game according to this card right here. So, however many players you have, that's however many meteors you're going to set on the board. So right now we got seven, so this would be a three or four player game. Also, this is going to tell you how many resource cards, which are these green cards up here, you are going to start with. Once you do that, you're going to flip the card over, and this will tell you how many cards you are going to draw when you go to a next level of the atmosphere. So essentially, if you're playing a three-player game and you go to, from five to four, you're going to draw two cards. Then you go to four to three, you're going to draw two cards, so on and so forth. So that's what that card is. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention one little bit of some, uh, one little buzzword that I'm going to use, and that is your launch pad. Your launch pad is just going to be an area in front of you where you're going to be doing either one of three various different activities, which we'll get into right now. So, as I mentioned, you are going to be shooting rockets at them. Now, these rockets are going to be in these green cards right here, which you're going to start off with, and we're just going to go over all the different kinds of cards that are in this green deck. The first one is going to be energy, and there's going to be four different kinds of energy, yellow, blue, red, green. They're going to have different symbols on them. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's just different four different kinds of energy. Now, these types of energy can be used to build build various different buildings that will help you out because there's one big crinkle that I have not mentioned in this cooperative game which is you're not allowed to talk unless of course you build a communication satellite which will then allow you to talk so it's going to be very difficult this one's a spy satellite which means you'll be able to flip over all your meteors which can be incredibly helpful but you'll find out more about that in a second last we got uh, this is an energy plant this is going to allow you to trade two green cards 
put them in the discard pile, and then take any one energy type that you'd like. And you're saying, that doesn't sound very good, but trust me, it can come in very handy when you need a specific type of energy. Now, the last thing that you can do in your launch site is build rockets. And there's going to be five kinds of rockets, which are named, numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pretty self-explanatory. If you want to launch this rocket, you have to play it in front of you. Uh, into your launch pad, and then you're going to need to have a red and a blue energy. Now, everyone else can contribute to your energy, so you might not have a red or a blue, but someone else can play a red and someone else can play the blue. Someone else can even put a rocket down for you. This is completely cooperative. You're going to be helping out this guy and helping out him and helping out everybody at the same time, and it's going to be very, very fast-paced. So, the three things you can do in your launch pad. Let's go over them real quick. First thing you're going to be able to do, you're going to be able to build these plants, which will help you out once you build it. It'll go up here to symbolize that you have it. You can also trash it if you need to, to gain an additional green card. But once you gain it, you lose that special ability. So that's the first thing you can do. The next thing you can do is you can build rockets. You're going to be doing that quite frequently. You can only build one thing at a time in front of you, but you'll be building rockets and then shooting them at the different meteors. The third and final thing, and the most quote unquote complex thing is called retrofitting and it's actually a very simple concept. I'll use this card to illustrate. It. Essentially, as long as you and your your teammates can put four of any type of energy or any kind of rocket in front of you, you're going to be able to draw five cards, which will be split up in various different ways depending on how many players you have. Um, or you can put four of or one of each of the four different types. So essentially, if you would like to retrofit, you can put four of any type of energy or one of each type of energy. Likewise, four of any number of rocket or four of any different type. So retrofitting rocket is going to be a little bit easier because you can do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, one, two, four, five, so on and so forth. So that's going to be a way for you to gain cards. That's what you're going to be doing in your launch pad. So Last thing I want to mention are the Meteor cards, because these Meteor cards are going to be out here, and you're not going to know how much damage you're going to need to do to destroy these Meteor cards, because they're going to be turned down. Uh, so they're going to be numbered 1 through 3, or 3 through 5 most of the time. This means that this right here is either going to be a 1, a 2, or a 3. So you're, you're, if you shoot a 4 rocket at it, you're going to be guaranteed to destroy it. 3 rocket, you're going to be guaranteed to destroy it. But if you shoot a 1 rocket at it, you only have a 1 and 3 shot of destroying it. Likewise, 3 to 5 works the same way. There's a big old stack of them, and some of them are going to have special symbols on them. For instance, you might see this little lightning bolt right here. This one's a really bad one, because this means you have to destroy this before you get to atmosphere level one. If this is here, when you get to this phase right here, the final sand timer, you instantly lose the game. This one, you're gonna have to shoot a rocket that has a red symbol on it. So this one could destroy it, this one could not, even though the number is higher. And they have green ones, yellow ones. These ones are gonna be double-sided, so you'll know exactly how much they are, but they're gonna cost seven or six, which means you're gonna have to shoot rockets together at them because you can do that. You can cooperatively work together to shoot three, four, five rockets at the same time if you've built that many rockets. Likewise, that's a good segue to this card, this one means that you need to have two rockets hitting this at the exact same time in order to destroy it. So, uh, we mentioned that this is a two right here, let's just pretend uh, that this is the one we're looking at. If you hit this with a one, nothing is going to happen except you're going to flip it over, so now you have knowledge. Your one rocket gets gets discarded, and boo-hoo to you. If you hit it with a 2, that's fantastic. It immediately is destroyed. Boom, it's gone. And if you hit it with a 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, bad things are going to happen in the form of overkill. Now, you, if you hit it with a 3 rocket, you will destroy this, so it will be gone. That will be fantastic. But what that means is, boom, you're going to move on to the next sand timer and the next level of the atmosphere. So you don't really want to overkill, but sometimes you do, especially if you have two or three rockets that overkill at the same time, you could potentially knock out a lot of the meteors. And that's what you're going to be doing. It's going to be a hectic, fast-paced game where you are trying to destroy all of the meteors, hitting them on the exact numbers, or perhaps working together to overkill at just the right time. Like, let's just pretend that you have just a teeny bit of sand left and you're going to overkill. It's not really going to hurt you too much at all. You're going to be drawing green cards, retrofitting, running out of cards, trying to fadangle away to get more cards. And that is the game in a nutshell. Now, there are three more variants that I want to mention, because I mentioned them earlier. There's going to be three different kinds of cards. Now, the game itself is difficult as it is, but if you want to make it more difficult, you can decide to add boss meteors, which will have, you know, big numbers. This one's crazy, so you're going to add two more meteors out there, and you're going to have to destroy this with rockets that contain a green, a blue, a yellow, and a red. So that's going to be really difficult. This one, you're going to actually put three different meteors on top of this one, so you have to destroy all those meteors before you get that one. These are called the boss meteors, and they're going to make everything more difficult. 
Luckily, though, they're actually going to give you some cards that you can put in there, which are going to allow you to have a special ability. So this one's going to give you an additional launch site, because normally you can only have, be building, you know, one rocket in front of you. However, you have an additional launch site, you'll be able to, you know, retrofit over here and have a rocket over here. It's just going to give you a little extra. This is another communications tower, because as I mentioned, what is going to happen is you can't actually talk to other people until you build one. Granted, you might cheat because the game is somewhat difficult. This one, emergency storehouse. You're going to give up two cards, you're going to get two cards. Uh, You'll get two more cards, that's pretty good. And that one's just for energy, if I recall correctly. So that one's going to help, but they decided also to bring you another deck that's going to make things more difficult. And these are called challenge cards. Everyone's going to get one of these. And so essentially this one means that you can't shoot a rocket at the same time with someone else. This one means that you can never play a blue in front of you. So that, that's going to be bad. And this one means you're never going to be able to talk. Even if you build a communication thing, you still can't talk. So it's going to add a lot of more complexity to the game. So you're going to be shooting rockets, destroying meteors, doing it as fast paced, and it's all going to be over in five minutes, unlike this video right here. So, this is Meteor from Mayday Games. Oh, great doke here. Meteor from Mayday Games. One of my final thoughts. Let's go to the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the cons side, the game is not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. First, it's cooperative. If you don't like cooperative games, if you hate cooperative games, this one might be for you. Everybody wins or loses together. Also, this game is very fast-paced, very frantic, very hectic. There's no turns. Everybody's doing everything at all different kinds of times. And, like, and you're like, what's going on? If you don't like that sort of thing, this one might not be for you. Also, this one has the rule where you can't talk to other people when you're first starting the game, even though you probably will cheat on that one. Uh, that If you don't like that, this one might not be for you. The last kind I have about this game is that the theme is about getting the Earth destroyed, which is going to be a turnoff to some people. I personally don't care, but some people really don't like that sort of theme. But let's get to the pros. And I'm going to start off with some big, bold words. This is the best finished game I have played in 2015. As of March, so we're you know three months in, this game is spectacular, this game is fun, this game will never, ever, ever leave my shelf. I don't see it, and there's a lot of reasons why. The first one, and the foremost one, is this game is fun. It is so much fun packed into five minutes, and it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel like a light game. It's a light game, but it's just so fast, and so frantic, and so hectic, and so addictive that it feels like it's bigger than it is. And it's the perfect filler game because it legitimately, you can have this up, out of the box, set up, and played in eight minutes, assuming everyone knows how to play. The five minute thing is legitimate. Now granted, when you first start the game, you're going to need to pause the sand timers and look in the glossary and then get back to it. But once you know how to play this game, we've played games of this in three minutes because sometimes you're going to get stuck, and I didn't mention this middle part, sometimes you're going to get stuck and you're going to have to pass and you might lose 20, 30 seconds on it and just go into the next phase of the atmosphere but that's fine it's lightning quick i personally love cooperative games i like the artwork i like the special cards i love that feeling when you finally realize that oh we need to overkill right at the last second and that was a strategy that took us a couple games to learn and then it was like oh if three of us overkill at the same time like right before the sand timer runs out you know there's literally next to no penalty but we destroy three asteroids and then you find out one you couldn't destroy and it's just like ah Okay, let's get back on track. What do I love about this game? I love the addictiveness of this game. This is this is like Oreos. Like you can't just have one Oreo. You can't just play one game of Meteor. We you just keep playing it and playing it and playing it because the game has that fantastic attribute where you'll get so close. You'll be like, oh, all we needed was one more yellow energy and we had it. And, and then you'll be like, the so you guys um. You, you want to play this again, or you want to do something different? And goes, yeah, let's play, let's play this again. And you just keep doing it over and over and over. And before you know it, you've been playing this for like, you know, an hour. Which is like 12 games, 10 games, something crazy like that. Um, I also love the, the special... I love how variable this game is. The game is really difficult when you first start it. So you can put in house rules. You can get rid of the no talking. Uh, you can get rid of the no showing cards. You can give people the cards that are going to give them advantages, that are going to help them out. You can, and if it's too easy, which trust me, it probably won't be too easy for a while, there's two separate decks that are going to make the game more difficult. Five, four, three, two players are all fantastic. One is fun, and I could see myself playing it if I knew I had like 15 minutes to play a game. I could definitely see myself busting this out. 
Um, but but definitely five. The more people you have, just the more hectic, the more crazy, the more launch pads, the more just frustration of waving your fist. Oh, you can't tell. Meteor is one of my favorite, and I want to say I want to make sure I say this correctly. This is my favorite published game of the year of 2015 right now. This is definitely going to be one of my top games of all time. I have a feeling. I don't I don't see this. You know, I definitely think this is going to be my top 50 games. It's going to be on my shelf for a very long time. Meteor from Mayday Games. If you look, if this looks like it might be fun to you. Trust me, go out, get it now. It is a blast. So, let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts on fast-paced games like this? The timed game, where everything is super hectic and super frantic, like Escape and this game. I personally love that concept. I love that adrenaline. It's just like, oh, we gotta do this, we gotta do this. Oh, no, 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 do that, do that. I like that an awful lot. What do you think about that? What's your favorite game in that genre? And if you have a favorite game that perhaps I have never heard of, I would love to hear about it, because I really do enjoy this genre. If you enjoy this content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube. That was a review for Meteor. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.